All right. I hope everybody had a, a healthy, meaningful, and, and somewhat playful lunch. If you're me, the, the, the game was to see how fast I could put pizza in my mouth. So I win. I, I got it all in. Um, but now we're back for uh, something I've been really looking forward to. Um, as we mentioned before, we're, we gave away this book. It's going to go, your book's going to Canada, Kat. Um, but I, I'm super excited to hear Kat Shire is the Associate Professor and Director of Games and Emerging Media Program at Marist College. I'm pretty sure that Kat and I have met somewhere in the game studies or game design world, but I can't place her. But regardless, I'm really excited about this book and this presentation because this is a really comprehensive deep dive into using games in a very specific context. And I think there's a lot that we can learn from um, not just in general how to play in education in general, but kind of what it looks like when you break it down. So we've challenged Kat to come today and to talk a little bit about her work and to maybe get us to play. I think maybe uh, she's going to stick her neck out here. So let's have some fun. So uh, take it away, Dr. Shire. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, first of all, everybody can see my slides, can hear me, just making sure a thumbs up. All right. Awesome. So, all right. So yes, there will be a little bit of a surprise participatory action later on. Um, it will be a risk. It will be possibly experimental. I may fail. Um, we may fail together, but it'll be fun. But I, uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about using games for a specific purpose, and that is for pro-social needs, right? So, so often we hear about games being, you know, folk, you know, causing all of these societal ills like addiction and violence and harassment and hate. And I want to look at the um, other side of the possibilities that we could use games for, and that is for transforming um, not only ourselves, but maybe even the world around us. And so a little bit about me, just, just so you know, by the way, if, ever, if you ever have any questions or you ever want to interrupt, please feel free to just interrupt or write in the chat. I'll try my best to watch the chat, but, you know, please, please ask questions and stop me if anything um, sparks your imagination. So here are some books that I've written on games and learning. I've been trying my best to explore this open space of using games for empathy and compassion and care for the last 20 years. And um, it's always this kind of question that I have in my mind, like are games the problem and the solution? Like, could we think about using play for solving some of the world's biggest problems, even while they may not be the most perfect, um, the most, um, you know, maybe not always the best way to um, interact, um, just like all of our communities and all of our spaces. Uh, there's negative aspects and there's, you know, the cruelty of life. And then there's also the positive, the connection, the care and the compassion. And so today I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about using games for those more positive means. So that thinking about ethics, thinking about compassion, thinking about bias reduction, thinking about learning and empathy. And I'm, I'm always curious, like if anybody's out there, like, like, do you, have you played any games like this? Have you used any games like this? Have you thought of, and you could type it in the chat too. Um, have you ever like used a game to like, maybe think about like reducing biases or, or exploring our own biases or exploring our identities in some way? Um, and it doesn't have to be, by the way, it doesn't have to be a digital game. It could be like a quick, you know, either a board game or like a quick game that you do in the classroom. Anybody use a game like that? This War of Mine, oh wow, okay. So This War of Mine is also a digital game. So that's really interesting, Depression Quest. These are great examples, I'm loving it, okay. Ooh, Barn Go, that's a really good one too, yeah. Um, these are great, oh wow. So um, awesome, so I, <laughs> I can I can see the chat as it com comes through, but for some reason can't get back to the chat. So if I miss your your game idea, um, I'm sorry. But these are amazing, amazing, amazing suggestions. I'm glad that you're using these games already in your classroom. 
Um, I love it. Yes, definitely like different ethical theories as applied to games. Bafa Bafa. I don't know that one. That sounds really interesting. I love this. These are really good suggestions of games. Awesome. Great. So well, I'm glad that you're already, you're already doing it. So this is fantastic. So, you know, just to take a step back for people who maybe haven't um, been, um, you know, thinking of games like this, um, I always think about the idea that, you know, playing is learning, but playing is also civics, right? Playing, playing is a form of civics. It's a way that we understand our world. We understand how we share resources. We understand how we govern ourselves. And so that to me is a really important part of play is really thinking about how we shape our world and how we create the world that we want to live in. And so um, just to give you like a really over big overview background for, for people who haven't used or thought of games in this way, I know I'm probably speaking to a crowd of people who already know all of this, but um, different ways that games might be supporting um, a playful and personal connection with a problem. Um, they can help people make active and meaningful choices. For example, making ethical choices that, you know, you could be in a situation where you have to make an ethical choice and then see the consequences of that choice. They help you relive and perform stories directly. So for example, right now I'm making a game that's being developed and we are using this game in Nigeria to help people understand what it's like to be um, from other ethnic groups that aren't their own. So there's over 250 different ethnic groups in Nigeria. And there's um, there was a recent civil war and there's still a lot of tensions that um, have emerged among these different ethnic groups. So we want to support um, bias reduction, empathy, and um, understanding of the discrimination that different people face. So for example, you might be playing the game as someone who's Hausa, um, even though you personally are Yoruba, and then you're understanding what it would be like to be um, someone who is Hausa and facing the kinds of discrimination you might face as someone from that background. And so again, games can help players take on new roles, right? So they're taking on the role of being someone who's Hausa, inhabiting, other people's perspectives that may not, may not be something that they're used to doing, right? You're, you're kind of playing with another perspective and seeing through their eyes. Um, it also helps us understand systems, right? So we get to play with managing different resources, trying different um, variables. So this Nigerian game is being developed right now. Um, so I'm um, writing the script. I don't, I don't think we have a name yet, but um, uh, hopefully soon we will be releasing it probably in the next year. But it will be like focused on, for, you know, it's being created for Nigerian youth. So um, I'm hoping that we can scale it so that we can have people from around the world play it to understand um, the Nigerian experience. Yeah, and then also exploring our own identities, right, and our own emotions, like games help us to play with different um, parts of our identities and to um, help us express emotions and to understand others' emotions. Um, it also enhances motivation, right, to tackle information. Like, for example, today, um, you know, every day I go through these sight word um, flashcards with my six-year-old, and it's like super I mean, I'll be honest, it's boring. Like we just have to go through these sight words and he has to learn them. So um, today I tried to make a much more playful approach to doing that by having, um, adding points. So to each one he got right, he got different points. If he got it wrong, you know, negative points, very simple game, um, but then it helped him with math, right? So adding points, it helped him with subtracting points. And then it also helped motivate him because he really wanted to do well, because if he got a certain amount of points, 50 points, he would earn some jelly beans. And again, very simple, very, um, you know, but it, it ended up motivating him so much that he was, he also performed a lot better than he normally would, right? So, um, so maybe he got 20 words wrong yesterday when I did it like the traditional way, but today he only got five wrong five words wrong. And so it, it got him like super enthused about um, wanting to tackle this information. 
And then, um, you know, there's a lot of times that we um, deal with serious topics in games and it, that might be surprising, but I'll show you some examples um, soon, but, you know, everything from medical care to um, tackling topics like um, suicide or depression. Someone mentioned depression quest. So these are serious topics, but, you know, a lot of times games are seen as less serious, right? They're seen as not very, um, you know, they're, they're like the opposite of, of serious, but they actually can be quite serious. Um, but also the fact that they're seen as more playful lets us almost tackle things that maybe are so intense, so um, hard for us to handle um, in a more um, open and vulnerable way. Cool. And the, oh, the software package. Well, the, so there's a ton. So someone asked about what's a good software package to use. So you could use anything from pen and paper, which like, you know, pen and paper is what I write, you know, start with pen and paper um, to all the way up to um, tools like the Unreal Engine or um, Unity, right? So these are like these um, big game engines that, or you could create your own game engine too. Like you're, you know, customize a game engine. I mean, there's lots of different tools. A lot of companies make their own engines, but but I would say, you know, starting with things like, you know, Scratch or um, a Twine too, which is like a good tool for interactive um, storytelling or, um, um, is there a, a link to this presentation? Well, I could definitely, I will send the presentation to anybody who is interested, but I'm going to show you that you do not need any tools to create a game because you can create a game just in your, with your mind, right? So we'll, we'll, we'll do a um, little activity later and you'll see that a game doesn't have to be fan, you know, made to be fancy at all. Um, but, you know, there are tools out there to, to make game digital game game creation easier. So lots of different games that are starting to be created to tackle some of these more um, serious topics. And one of them is quandary. And that is um, a playful way of thinking about ethics. And you are, um, you're in a new society, it's called Braxos. You have to solve problems that your society is facing. And to do that, you have to evaluate the perspectives and opinions of the different um, people in Braxos. So you have to go out and, and interview them and find out what they, what they would do. And then you have to build your case for what you want to do based on this evidence. And it's not like there's like right or wrong answers. It's more about like how you build your case that matters. And so I think that's like a really, um, really cool way of using play to teach ethics. Um, Sweetheart is a really awesome game. It's an indie game, which means like, you know, this isn't, and all of these games, by the way, that I'm showing you right now, these are not like big budget games. These are smaller games made by smaller groups of people. So this is called Sweetheart. It's made by a woman named Kat Small. It's about um, the experience of being a, a young black woman who is navigating the workplace and school and the, the you know, even the journey to, to all of these places and the kinds of microaggressions that she faces as a black woman and um, how that affects her. Like you can see at the top left, there's uh, a meter about um, her stress level in what she's doing. Um, so that's a really cool example of a game where you're making different choices and seeing the consequences of those choices based on the kinds of microaggressions that you face. All right, this is a game called Kind Words. And this is a game that is like very simple. You're, you're quite literally writing letters, kind letters to people out in the world. So what will happen is you, um, let's say you have a problem, right? And like, for example, like I when, I, when I played this game, I was in the middle of writing my book, We the Gamers. And um, so just so you know, someone asked, are these free games? Quandary is free. Um, uh, the uh, Sweetheart is free. Um, kind words, I believe, is not free. Um, so I just want to let you know there are, I will be showing some more free games though, but those first two that I showed you are definitely free and I'll, I'll send links to anybody who's interested in those games. Um, so it, with kind words, I was in the middle of writing my We the Gamers book and I was nervous about it, right? So I wrote like a little letter in the game and I said, I'm, I'm nervous about writing this new book. Um, I don't, you know, I don't know if it's going to be good enough. I'm, I don't know if I'll ever finish. 
And I sent my letter off into the game. And then within a week, I had a bunch of letters, like real letters written by anonymous people, writing back words of encouragement and literally kind words back to support me in my endeavor of writing a book. And so that's that's what the game is all about. You basically are responding to letters that other people have written and giving them encouraging words and then getting letters back from from um, from your own um, issues and problems and things that you that you want that you're facing. And so it's just like a really um, sweet, kind and compassionate game. OK, all right. This game is also free. Um, this is called When Rivers Were Trails, and it's about um, the Anishinaabe people, right? And they, um, it's like taking you back into time. You're taking on the role of, of someone who uh, is Anishinaabe, and you are, um, you know, it's the late 1800s, and you're facing having to be removed from your land, um, and it's, the historical context is the allotment acts, that moved um, indigenous peoples from their land. And so you're actually having to go on a journey um, away from your land. And um, along the way, you're learning about the culture and uh, the language and, and, and what it's like to be, you know, to be removed from your land. And so you're getting that first person perspective in this um, point and cl click adventure game. All right. And then, okay, so I've been showing you digital games, but games do not need to be digital, right? They can be um, created by you, created by your, your own kids and your students. Um, and so this is a game, Common Circles. This was actually developed during a game jam of high school students. So high school students developed this game. And basically what it is, it's a card game where you play with other people and you um, have to try to figure out what kinds of things you have in common with different celebrities. And so they have all these different cards with different celebrities and you're trying to understand the commonalities among you and these celebrities. So again, it's like thinking about your identity and exploring it in relation to other people. Okay. And then, so I've been talking about like more indie games, but you know, even like big, top popular sellers can have um, different ways that they support um, pro-social and um, inclusive and, and you know, civic understanding. So this is Animal Crossing New Horizons. It is a game that costs money, right? This is like one that um, I know a lot of you are excited about. Um, so like, again, like you're probably thinking, well, like I know Fortnites and I know like the Minecrafts and I, and like, by the way, like Fortnite and Minecraft can have um, I know it's surprising to hear about learn, like could have educational purposes too, but Animal Crossing definitely has as its like ethos, um, a supportive environment. You're designing your own island, you're visiting other people's islands, you're planting flowers, you're, you're collecting critters. You really are like designing yourself and you're designing who you are based on how you developed your island. This is like an image from my own designed island when I, you know, I was like, it was like the beginning of the pandemic when this game came out. So I'm like wearing a mask. I'm, um, you know, I've got like fun Easter balloons, you know, I've got lots of flowers around me. You know, this is like reflective of who I am and the things that I care about. And then I look at like, for example, my daughter's island and it's reflective of what she cares about, right? So in her house, when you walk in, it looks like an aquarium and it looks like there's like fish everywhere and she's designed it in the way that she um, expresses herself. And then I designed mine to look like a library because I like to be, you know, sitting in, in the middle of books and, and feeling, um, you know, comfortable that way. So this is like a cozy game where you get to know yourself, but you also can connect with others. So, all right, um, let's see what I got next. Okay, so um, definitely any other examples, please list them there. I'm always curious to hear what, what kinds of examples you all have, but I'm gonna try my best and this, you know, this could be, um, could be interesting, but we're gonna try to do our own little game here. And we're gonna, we're, we might have to make it up on the fly. We might have to redesign it and, and revise it as we go and that's okay. Um, so this is, so we're gonna, um, we're gonna try. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Let me see if I can do that. 
All right, stop share. Okay. So this is what I need you all to do. And by the way, I totally get that you may not want to do this. So if you want to participate in this game, you have to turn on your, your camera. Okay. So that's, so let me see how many people want to participate. Turn on your camera. It doesn't even have to be on your face. You could turn it up like this. Um, but you have, you have to at least be able to be seen. And again, this is an experiment. We are, we are playing this together. We'll see how it works. Um, so let me see how many people we've got. Okay. So, all right. Okay. So, so turn it on, turn on that camera. If you want to play, if you don't want to play, then just keep it off. That's totally fine. Um, it's, it's really up to you, but I want to, um, don't worry about how you look. You all look beautiful and, and clever and, and magical. Um, everybody, everybody looks amazing. I love all the smiling faces. All right. So, and I would, I would, the heart. That, that's a great, that could help in this game. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Um, we are going to, how am I gonna do this? Okay, okay, I'm gonna put you into groups. Let's see, we've got, let me just count how many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so keep those cameras on if you want. All right, so we have like about 25 people. So I'm gonna put you into, uh, maybe if, I'm gonna do four, gr four groups of six. We'll see how that goes, okay? So I'm gonna like really quickly call off your name and tell you what group you're in. What I would recommend highly is that would, uh, you write down who's in your group, okay? So, cause again, I've played this game in person but I've never done it in Zoom, so we're gonna, this is like an experiment. So we're like, write down the names of the like six people that are in your group, all right? All right, so, and I'm gonna get these names wrong, so I'm I'm sorry in advance. Okay, so um, Kyan, or is that right? Kyan, I'm sorry. All right. Um, yeah, but whatever. All right, Kyan, Kyan B, um, Coral K, uh, Lisa F, Andrew, D and Jacqueline M, you are one group. Okay. So just, you know, look, see who you are, figure out who you are, and note you are in a group. All right. Now, next group Katie T. Can you David repeat who's T. in the first group? <laughs> who, what, what, what? Can you repeat who's in the first group? I'm sure, sorry. sure, sure. Of course. Of course. course. I'm I sorry. I'm doing this. <laughs> I'm doing that. Okay. Yes. Thank you, David. Um, we've got Kai and B, Coral K. Thank you, someone who's writing these down. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Andrew D and Jacqueline M. You are group one. Okay. Group one. All right. All right. Katie T. All right. Yeah. Thumbs up. Ooh, I like the thumbs up. David T. Right. You know, you, you see. Okay. Um, Alejandra A. Or is that, I might have said that wrong. I'm sorry. Um, okay, got it. Thumbs up. Good. Chelsea. All right. Angela C. You are group two. All right. Yes. <laughs> I like this. You're already like competing with each other. This is good. All right. Jessica H. Um, all right. I'm trying to look for the people of their videos on. Julia S. Wendy. Melissa B and Sharon P, you are in group three. Hope I hopefully I'll get these groups to be somewhat pair, like you know, about the same. Okay. All right. Um, German G, Mary J, Nikki, I don't know your last name, but it's N-I-C-K-Y. And then Jessica W, is Jessica W, is that a video? No, I can't tell. Um, no, okay, forget, no, Jessica W, I think the video is off. Um, Natasha, is your video on? Okay, you're moving, okay, sorry. Natasha, the nurse, um, <laughs> sorry. And Joan B, you are group four. Okay, so that was German G, Mary J, Nikki and Natasha and Joan B, group four. All right, thank you for your patience. Group five, Maggie T. All right, 
Reagan C, Alyssa, Alyssa B, Christina. Oh, some more people uh, joined the video. This is great. Christina, you're all kind of curious. Jacqueline L, um, you are group five. All right, we move to group six. Um, Denise L. Um, oh, I'm going to mess up this name. Kessa or Kisa W. Uh, okay. And we've got Alexander C. Stephen C. Julia R. All right, that's six. And then last but not least, um, seven. This is going to be seven groups. So you're going to really have to work hard here to win. Um, John H. Kim D, Shirley C, um, Ellen or, Aline, no, sorry, Eileen, I can't see, that's why. Eileen W, Lee Ann G, and then hold on, because I see a couple more, um, that's group seven. All right, so Andrea P, I'm gonna put you in group, I'm going to put Andrea P into group one. So put, I'm going to put you back in group one. Okay. So it's going to be a little tricky. Uh, maybe I should make another group one. We only have three more. So I'm going to have to kind of, some of the groups are going to be a little uneven. Um, and no one else wants to add, right? No one else. We got, ooh, wait. Okay. Sharon P. Okay. You're already. Okay. Um, so, so make sure no one kind of adds or, you know, adds or, detracts because we got, okay. So Vanessa R, I'm gonna put you in group two. Okay. And then Edrilyn, sorry if I'm pronouncing that, Edrilyn A. Lucas. Um, Edrilyn A. Lucas, I'm gonna put you in group three. Okay. And then did I miss anyone? Um, wait, is reach, is it reach? No. Okay, is anybody missing that I haven't called? Is there someone that I accidentally forgot? I mean, I'm obviously not in my own group. Is there anybody that I forgot? No? Okay. Here's Would you add want. me, Lucia Berkey? Oh, Lu Lucia. Oh, I'm so sorry. Lucia, I don't see your video on, that's why. Can I do it without video? Um, no. I don't think so. I mean, I'm trying to think. How could? Oh, gotcha. I don't Didn't think you could. I don't think I. I'm, I don't think we could. I'm so sorry, Lu but you could watch. Okay. Um, I don't think oh, cool. for this one. Maybe I don't know. Maybe there's a way to do it. Um, but I don't know what it would be, because I people need to be able to see each other for this. Okay. All right. So here's the rules. I need everybody to pull out, see this notebook, just like rip out a piece of paper. Um, everybody get a piece of paper and get a pen um, of some kind, okay? So have a piece of paper that people could see, all right? And so everybody get a piece of paper, have it, be holding it, be ready to do something with it, okay? So the first thing I need you to do, and I make sure you know who's in your group. You got to really know who's in your group, right? I And then you cannot use any talking. So no speaking. You can use the chat. You can gesture. And you can use your paper. But I want you to be um, either the first. So the first group, and I'll tell you when to go. You either need to be the first group who has all X's on your paper, or you have to be the first group that has all O's on your paper. But you need to work with your group, somehow gesturing to your group, which of those, whether it's an X or an O, that you will be. And if you're the first group to do that, if you think that you're the first group that you're doing, we're not doing it in a breakout room, we're doing it right here, right here. That's why it's hard. That's why it's difficult. You can't use any talking, okay? This is, I'm trying to make it tricky, a little trickier, okay? So no speaking, you have to either somehow gesture to your group, okay? All right, just like thinking about gestures you would use, or you could use the chat with, with your group to try to tell you whether you wanna put an X or an O on this, have it being hold at, held up as the first group to do that. And if you think you're the first group, 
then you can talk and say us, you know, shout it out. Okay, group, whatever group your name is. One, two, three. Okay, you ready? Set, go. We got it. All right, who's who said we? Who's got it? Who's Champions group three. Group three? Yeah. Alejandro, hold yours up. We had it. Katie has a hold yours up. Group, wait, that's group two, you mean? Group two? Or oh, group two, whatever. Yeah, All right, so we have so Katie, three. Katie, David, Alejandra, Chelsea, Angela. Yes, all of yeah. you have, a, have an X? All right, you are the winners. Good job. All right, now we're going to make it a little harder. We're going to make it a little more difficult. How did that feel so far? Hard. A little hard? We, we didn't realize, like, after we got our X's or O's, what do we need to do? I mean, I think my gr group four had it all, but. Oh, you had it four? You were the winners? Well, we okay. Just, we just kept quiet. Uh, I, okay, I, no. So make sure you stay once you get. So, so once you all think you've got it, then you have to say something. Then you're allowed to talk, okay? I see a Reagan. I see a Reagan in group five, but for the life of me, I couldn't find Reagan in the chat. <laughs> oh no! Okay, it's R A Y G A N. That could be why. Wow. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to yeah. give you guys a, a tip. This is a total cheater tip, but you can <laughs> rearrange your video windows on Zoom, so you can put your group where you can see everybody. Yes. Yes. Sneaky, sneaky. So there are ways to little to make sure that you can all see each other at once. Um, go Which ahead. Jessica is in group four. There's a couple of you. Yeah, so Jessica in group four. Um, so this was kind of like a test run, right? Just, there's a Jessica in group three. So let me just read through the groups again, just so everybody knows. Um, group one, Kai and B, um, Coral K, Lisa F, Andrew D, Jacqueline M, and Andrea P, but that's Andrea spelled A-N-D-R-I-A. -A. Group two. Katie T, David T, Alejandra, um, Alejandra, um, sorry, Alejandra A, Chelsea, Angela, and Vanessa. Group three, Jessica H, Julia S, Wendy, Melissa B, Sharon P, and Edraline Lucas. Okay, group four, Gurman G, Mary J, Nikki, Natasha, and Joan B. Group five, Maggie T, Reagan, spelled R-A-Y-G-A-N, Alyssa, Christina, W, and Jacqueline, L. There's two Jacquelines. Okay, six, Denise, L, um, Kessa, or Kisa, W, Alexander, C, Stephen, C, and Julia, R. Seven, last but not least, John, H. Um, I can't read my handwriting. Kiru, D, do something, Q uh sorry um let me see who that would be kim oh kim kim d i can't spell okay i can't read my hand right um john h kim d shirley c eileen w and leanne g for group seven does everybody know who's in their group do we want to try that again or do we want to make it a little harder No one's answering. You can talk now. Harder. So, harder. harder. Okay, we're going to make it harder. All right, we're going to make it harder. I want you to turn your sheet over now. Okay, turn your sheet over. Now, what I want you to do, okay, is I want you to do the following. So most of you have, some of you have five people in your group. Some of you have six, doesn't matter. Um, I want you to do the following. I want you to, I want you to figure out, hmm, um, you're going to need at least one of each in your group, okay? So you're going to need at least one star written, okay? So like, maybe I should write this down for you. So at least one star, at least one heart, at least one tree, and at least one sun, okay? Okay, so 
in, as a group, you're going to have to use using gestures, using um, emojis, using any kind of things that you can use with while being silent. You have to decide, um, you know, for, since you have th some of you have five or six, some of you can have two hearts and, you know, that, but you need at least one of each. So you have to have at least one star, at least one heart, at least one tree, and at least one sun in your group. Okay. So you have to figure out who's going to get each of those symbols and hold it up. And when you hold it up and you, you know, you know, you've done it, then you can shout out you know, your name of your group, okay? Are you ready? Does everybody understand what to do? I see nodding, uh, some thumbs up maybe. All right, all right, and go. I'm gonna be bold and say team five's got it. <laughs> that, was, that was that quickly? <laughs> team five? Yes. Team five, all right, team five. We've got Maggie T, where are you Maggie T? <laughs> Maggie T. Well, you just tell me, like Maggie T. What do you got up? You've got. I can't see what you have. Um, a a tree. tree. Okay. Um, Reagan. What do you got? You can talk. It's okay. Ray oh, you have a heart. Okay. Um, Alyssa B. You also have a heart. Um, Chris. Oh no, we have too many hearts. We messed it up. All right. So. That's okay. You could have two hearts, but as long as you have a, you have all the others. Christina, what do you have? Yeah, that's where I messed up. I got a heart too. <laughs> uh oh, okay, okay. No, no one's a winner. Keep going. Keep going. You got to tell me what name, what group. Got to tell me the group. I'm team one. Team one. Okay, team one. I'm Kai and B. What do you got? Can't see it. Star. I'm a, star, um, a sun. Okay, coral. What do you got? can't see where's coral coral is where's coral ah a star okay lisa you have a star also andrew what do you got where's andrew a heart and jacqueline m you have i can't see what you got do you have a tree i hope you have a tree can't see it's a tree all right group one you are the winner okay good job all right, now we're gonna do. My toddler would say the star is the sun is a star. That's true. Oh, no. You're right. <laughs> He's not here. So. There's a star and then the sun. I know. <laughs> they are they are the same. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, maybe that maybe those were too similar. Um, I was trying to figure out which ones would be easy to draw. Um, okay, so now there's another round. Now what I want you to do is I want you as a group. Now that you have, you know, each of you should have a heart or you know, there should be at least. So if you if you didn't, if you didn't have at least one of those, cross out whatever you've got. And, you know, that group that had three hearts, cross out whatever it is and make sure you have, you know, a tree or something instead. So I want ev so every group should have at least one of each. And now the next round, you're going to have to decide as a group which of the symbols um, gets eliminated, okay? So how are you gonna decide that? No speaking, you have to decide if the heart, the sun, the tree, or the star is the one that gets eliminated, okay? Are you ready? All right, go. Group six, got it. Six? Okay. One, two, I mean two. Oh wait, two? Oh, two? Okay, two, which which one did you eliminate? We eliminated the star. star. All right, so all the stars, turn off your camera. Ooh. Everybody who's a star, you gotta turn it off. In all the groups? In, uh, in, all, the groups? in all the groups. All right. Anybody who's a star, got to say bye-bye. All right. And now whoever's left over, you've got to pick another one to remove. As a group, you have to decide oh, which yes. symbol are you going to get rid of. And shout out if you've got it. Group two. Uh, 
Group two. Okay, group two. Who did you get rid of? The heart. The heart. All right. That means all the hearts. Everybody who's a heart, turn off your camera. All right. Now I want you to, as a group, decide who do you want to remove? You've only got two left. Decide. Just shout out if your group. Group three says sun. All right, group three, you decided on the sun. All right, sun, turn off your cameras. All right, so that means what we have, just have the tree left, is that right? All right, trees, you're the winners, but at what cost, right? You've, you've lost all the rest of your partners. So if you want, you can turn back your cameras, but you can also, it also, you can see how, um, you know, imagine if it wasn't like the tree who, um, or the sun or the, or the hearts or the stars that you were excluding, but you were deciding who to exclude um, people from a certain group or certain identity or people who um, from a certain background. And, how that felt. And I don't know, does anybody want to share how that felt playing that playing that game? You can turn back your cameras on now if you want. You don't have to. But does anybody want to share? I'll say I thought it was uh, chaotic and it took a long time to try to figure out how to arrange it, but I was yeah. still having a really great time. Oh, and good. all of the like mechanisms that we normally turn to to communicate I just couldn't figure it out. So I felt really challenged. Mm, yeah, no, I know. It's like the, the usual ways when you would talk to people and to try to strategize together were cut off, right? So that could be like someone said frustrating. It could be hard. It could be confusing. Um, um, good. Okay. Um, how am I, anybody else want to share? I learned you, you can make more uh, emojis from Stephen Kane. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Thanks, Stephen. Everybody in Zoom meetings with me will now know <laughs> all the emoji. Any any other any other yeah. thoughts about it? Yeah, I was thinking about the groups that were really fast and how decisions were made. And it just kind of made me reminded me of Barnga and who gets to make the decisions and decide for the group. And, and maybe that was really efficient, but I felt like in some groups, if we were like, okay, are we going to do this or this? That took too much time and probably <laughs> led to our demise. Yeah, I mean, that's a really good point. Like, who do you defer to to make that decision and how do you collectively decide? Um, for sure, that was that's a really good point. Good. Any other, someone else I think wanted to well, say. I was going to say, when, when it felt like it was competitive, I think it was fun and we were all doing it together. But once you started to say that we were being the people excluded, it was like that context was like, oh, we're in kind of a big hurry to get rid of people. <laughs> so, kind of flipped, yeah, I mean, know. that's a really good point, um, David. I I made this game actually exactly for that purpose, which was to to show people that a game you know, played one way could make you feel more like a team, like that you're working together, that you're collaborating, that you're caring about each other. And then, you know, changing, you know, changing the rule of it, you know, changing it to like, who do you exclude? Suddenly that group that you were like expecting to collaborate with is now deciding to like turn against you. And how does that feel that, that very different feeling of, um, oh, you know, now I'm feeling excluded and that that feels different, you know? Um, and yeah, Lisa, like that idea of like whose voices get to decide, right? Who gets to be included or excluded? I never felt included from the beginning because I can't move a, an image from one screen to the other. The click and drag won't work on my computer. So I yeah. can see Natasha, but nobody else in my group. <laughs> oh no, I'm sorry, yeah. When I play this, it's usually in person with a big group. Um, I, 
this is my first time doing it in Zoom. I tried really hard to figure out how we might be able to do it. And I'm so sorry that it was frustrating for you because I'm sure that, you know, it's just like the technology just is not perfect for playing sometimes. But it's good to be reminded that some people will feel excluded, even if you're trying your best to include everybody. Yes, exactly. Right. So even though the game um, was being able to be played by some other people, right, some people are, you know, it's not always going to be accessible to everybody. Right. So that's a really good reminder that our games are, you know, even if we think we've designed them for everybody, right, it's not always accessible. And that's why this is, you know, you play test, right? So this was my, you could call it first time play testing this game. And you were all part of that experiment and you were all part of giving the kinds of feedback that you would need to maybe redesign it, to make it more inclusive, to make it more accessible, to make it make more sense for your audience. Good. Control command space. Sorry, what was that, Sharon? I'm still learning how to do an emoji. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. I mean, right. Like we're still like learning these technologies. Um, good. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely sometimes like chaos. Um, yep. Exactly. Like people who have different um, impairments, different abilities, different disabilities, um, mm -hmm. all of these things are going to affect the way that they can participate in the kinds of play that we want to create. Good. Any other thoughts? How might you change this? What would you do to make it different? What would you do to make it better? I wanted to say that I really like this game and I teach online a lot. I probably would, this doesn't really have to do with the point of the game, but I probably would break people up into breakout groups first, mm -hmm. have them write down each other's names and then bring everybody back. So at least you know. Uh, okay, yeah. That's a great point, like putting them into breakouts first, getting them to know each other, see each other, get to know, and then like bring them out and do the, the game. I love that. Yeah, that's awesome. Any other ideas or how might you change this? I might yep, Dan, um, Danette said something about, um, you know, if they're your students, you already can pre-assign them into groups and they, they might even already know each other a little bit, or this could be like an icebreaker. I, uh, if I may, um, I, uh, I'm a clinical nurse educator and I can foresee using something like this uh, when we have new resident nurses fresh out of school, um, when we're trying to get to know them and to know how much skills they, they're coming to us with, especially throughout the pandemic, a lot of these schools are not giving them clinical time because they're keeping them out of the hospitals. So this would be an interesting way to say something like, I mean, it would be very different, of course, uh, but more like uh, pick certain skills and just start shouting, okay, those of you who have done this, raise your hand and then put them in a group, those of you who have done mm. so on and so forth, just to kind of get a temperature check on, on skills that they're coming to us with because we're struggling a lot with that currently right now. Yeah, I mean, that's a great point. You could put people together based on skills. I mean, I was thinking like, how would I put people to groups? Like, because it took a while to put everyone in a group. I was thinking, should I just put everybody with like a red shirt on in a group or like, a you know, a white shirt on? Um, I didn't know. I wasn't sure how it was going to do it. And I didn't know how many people were going to turn on their cameras. Right. So that that makes it a little bit more um, tricky. So so that's a great way to do it, like based on skills or based on interests. Um, those are all awesome ideas. Um, good. Um, yeah. If you if you have I mean. It would, it would add a different complexity to the game, but you could do it by interest and just like pre-select a random number of like images and have that co coincide to a breakout group and have students join the group by interest. And you might have groups of varying sizes, which could like, you know, add complexity to the, to the play. If, if one group has more members, they have more people to get on track. But that's also another life lesson because sometimes we're juggling larger things, smaller things than other people. So it can it can still relate, I guess. Awesome. Yeah. So that that's a great, that's a really good point. They don't even have to be the right, you know, the same size groups. They could be all different. They could be based on interests. And that's awesome. Any other suggestions? Usually when I do a game like this. So I get, I'll get suggestions from my students on how to fix it. And then I say, okay, let's play it. Let's try it. Let's see what, it, let's see what happens. 
And so when I do this in my classroom, I, I do it slightly different. Um, I have everybody take a piece of paper and they have, they get, they decide to put an X or an O on their paper. And then I put them in, um, in, um, you know, maybe three or four different rows. And then I say, okay, you have an X or O on your, um, in your, on your paper. You have to figure out how to be a row that has all X's or all O's by trading with people um, either in front of you, behind you, or next to you. And so they have to trade until they become the row with all X's and or, and or all O's. And then in the next round, I say, okay, now you have to, um, if let's say X, the X is win, okay? And then in the next round, I say, okay, if you end up with an X at the end of like, like the music, like one of these, like, you know, kind of like, um, hot potato, right? So you don't want to end up with the ax in your hand, but you have to keep trading. You have to keep trading with your partners. You can't hold on to your um, X or O for too long. So they have to keep trading. And then whoever ends up with the X is the loser. And so then they talk about like what it's like in the first round when you're playing as a team and you're trying to strategize together on being all the axes versus the second round where you're really more of like an individual and you have to just like, try to get rid of that X. And sometimes students will like kind of cheat. They'll be like hiding their X when they're trading it. And so they start to think about like how just a simple rule change and just a simple way of changing um, an X to something you want to an X to something you don't want um, really makes a, a completely different system and a completely different feeling for them. And then they start to make, like, we start to make other rounds, like, okay, now, now what can we do? Oh, maybe we have to have like a certain amount of like equal X's and O's, you know? So then we try that. Um, so then we keep changing it. So I tried to make, like, I'm like, how could I make a game like that? Um, that would work through Zoom where we only see each other um, and we have to kind of all be, you know, X's or O's or, um, you know, thinking about like, how do we exclude um, so, you know, something or someone and what that feels like to suddenly be excluded in a game. And it, again, it doesn't need to be this like full digital game. It could be something much more simple and straightforward. All right. Any other thoughts or questions? So you know we're running out of time. I had a quick question for you, Kat. In terms yeah. of the, the, the balance of the the discovery that happens during the play versus the the conversation or the debrief that happens after is there a balance or does it just depend or would you prefer that the conversation happens inside the play or is it okay to have a quick simple little game that generates an hour long debate or yeah i mean i i kind of go with the flow like some sometimes i'll play this um you know i'll do this exercise in class what I, I'm usually doing it in, in my ethics and gaming class. And sometimes the students will come up with like a lot of ideas of how they might change that game. And then that, you know, during the debrief, we're coming up with ideas and then we play them, you know, we play them and we, we you know, we, um, we try to put into action like some of those ideas that we have. So like, for example, I could, we, you know, someone said, oh, why don't we go into breakouts first and then come back and then we know our group and we, you know, or like, let's do it by interest we could have tried that, you know, if we had more time and we had more ability, we could have tried those different, um, you know, ad adaptations to see how they work and see how they feel differently. And then we, and then we um, continue to give feedback and remark on those changes and how it makes us feel and how it changed the system um, in terms of su feeling support and love and care versus feeling competition and, you know, intense and stressed and frustrated. Um, cause you know, those are, there's so many different ways that play can, um, um, spark emotions, right? There's a, um, there's a question in the chat, um, from Danette. It says, do you have any active learning activities you've used, um, across different modalities? Is this just for like, I didn't know if this was specifically to me or for all, um, for everyone. Um, but I do, I teach, actually I'm teaching online right now and I'm using both synchronous and asynchronous techniques. And I'm actually teaching through something called Discord. Um, not sure if anybody's heard of it, but it's, it's a platform like this where you can 
use video and talk to each other, but it includes breakout rooms that always exist, right? So you have a bunch of channels that you can um, kind of jump into. There's both text channels and video channels. Um, so there's some places where you can write, um, and then there's some places where you can talk and chat with each other. And you can also um, do the same kinds of things like sharing your screen. So um, in that, I use all kind. I create all kinds of games because you know it's a different kind of platform, and we use different kinds of of play. Um, you know, both to still learn the platform, um, but then also to engage in the learning material, right? So, um, for example, um, I actually have my students create um, escape the Discord server games. So they actually made. Um, their own Discord server, and then they created their own um, different channels and different used video and used all different kinds of ways to create and escape the room um, game in that. Um, and so there's ways that you can like lock and unlock channels and there's different, um, different logic you can add. So they were actually able to make this whole kind of escape the room. Um, yeah, with, um, with Discord. But I'm sure a lot of you have awesome, other awesome ideas that you can, that you can share. Uh, any other questions? Because I know we're out of, almost out of time. One thing I do want to add is that, you know, having your students design their own games is a really great activity. Um, having them design with you so I, um, and I can just maybe just share this really quickly. Like, I know we only have like a minute left, but let me see if I could just share it. Okay. All right, so we've already done this, but I wanted to just show you that um, I've created um, guides for having what I call a game jam, which is like a hackathon or a, um, a quick, um, in, intense, sometimes intense, um, creation of games where um, students or even game professionals, any people really are working together to create a game in a very short amount of time. And so I created some principles that you could use in games if you wanted to create a game for empathy and compassion and care. Um, this guide, by the way, is totally free. You can download it at the link um, provided. Um, or I could give you the link afterward. Um, I also wanted to show you that I'm also running these game jams in Nigeria where they're actually working with um, professionals to create their own games about identity. So that's a really exciting um, new project that I'm working on in Nigeria. And then um, I just wanted to give you my, um, my information so you can see that. Thank you so, so much. In touch and thank you so much for having me. I love that. Such a great um, example of creativity and innovation and just trying things out in front of your students. Maybe it doesn't work. Yeah, I really right? That. Like that happens a lot. Like things don't work or I like on the fly will like change things yeah. um, to make them work better. Kind of and like students, improvisation, I guess. Yeah, and I think students really appreciate that. Um, I think sometimes they get a little weary of the polished professor, so I appreciate that. And I think this is a good example, too, of um, earlier we were talking about using play and games to talk about serious topics. So I think this is a great example of that. Thank you so much, Kat. Thank you. Thank you. I'm putting the link to my, oh, someone put it in there, but yeah. It's um, the link to my book is Games for Civics, um, or there's another link there too for it. Um, thank you so much, everyone. Have a great day. See you soon.